Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Terrifying Tuesday. And what is our topic for this Terrifying Tuesday? Well, it is Halloween ends again. But this time, we're going to do something different. A lot of people ask me what I think is really going on with the two Michael Myers in the movie. So we're going to talk about that. So let's jump right into it. We're going to be talking about the two Michael Myers in this video, but namely the notion that Corey Cunningham may be innocent. Now, we all know that there looks like there are two Michael Myers in this film. It would be a real bait and switch if we find out that Michael Myers took the ring, but we know that's not true because... He's missing fingers, and the one killer isn't missing fingers, so obviously someone's dressing up like Michael Myers. I said in a previous video that I'm not sure this is Corey because it would give away too much. It would be very straightforward and kind of spoil any surprise. But what if that's not the surprise? The more I thought about it, the more I had a different theory in mind. And that theory is that no matter what the outcome, whether Corey is guilty or Corey is innocent, the psychological thriller aspect is what they're using to pay homage to Christine. And the reason they pose the question, is this too much like Christine? Christine is a famous John Carpenter film and also a famous Stephen King book. And the character of Arnie Cunningham finds himself really obsessed with this old car. The old car being Christine. Now the car is supernatural and sort of comes to life. It seems to really call to him. It changes him in every possible way. They don't actually ever make it so that you hear him listening to the voice of the car, but it's always there in the background. Is he really Arnie anymore or is he something else? And I think that's where we're going with this. Whether Corey is guilty or whether Corey is innocent is besides the point. Let me explain. You see, if Corey turns out to be innocent, then this other killer is the one that is hearing the mask. I say hearing the mask, but it's not quite that simple. The mask isn't going to be an entity that's alive or something like that, but it's going to be used to call to this person for whatever cause they see fit. It's more of a crutch, if you will, a crutch for their psyche. They need this crutch to be able to do what they think they need to do. And what they think they need to do is kill people. It's very much this psychological thriller type of move to make this inanimate object appear more alive than it actually is. The mask isn't necessarily calling to the killer. But here's where this gets to be a little bit more of a complicated theory. There is a girl involved. This other girl, before you start saying, wow, uh, we know it's Allison, is an Allison. In fact, it's an actress who played her stand-in, which isn't uncommon in Hollywood to have a stand-in get a role on the actual film and apparently this is a big enough role that it's not an uncredited one. It actually has some substance. In fact, this role may be the motive to our killer. The actress is Emily Brinks. And the role is actually called Dead Lover. Now, this doesn't lead credence to it being the girl on the billboard because we already have a name for that particular character. However, since that particular character isn't listed on IMDb, maybe it's possible that that is the character's name. But in any case, Michael Myers killed this girl. 
And this may be the motive either for either for the killer or if if by chance Corey is our killer, it could just provide a motive for him. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking how? And what does this have to do with the whole, is this movie too much like Christine? Well, Arnie was in love with this girl in the movie Christine. A girl that all the other boys were kind of obsessed with. She was really hot and they all liked her and you know how it goes. And that's, you know, he ended up getting her and they never really say why or how. He just kind of got different. After he found Christine, he changed in every sense of the word. He went from this shy nobody nerd who was getting bullied to suddenly becoming the guy you don't mess with, the uber scary guy. And that could very well be what we see here with Corey. Corey's dating this girl who's murdered, murdered by Michael Myers. He goes to meet up with Michael Myers. Revenge. He gets pushed down, strangled a little bit. Somehow he manages to escape. But not before he decides that Michael Myers was right somehow. Somehow in his mind, he needs revenge. He needs to make sure that Michael Myers will pay. Now, maybe he thinks he killed Michael. He thinks he killed Michael. But he needs to prove that Michael Myers is still a threat. So he goes around pretending to be Michael Myers. Getting revenge on the people who bullied him. Very much the way Arnie and Christine get revenge on the people who bullied him. And... Unlike Christine, this time the girl that he was with dies. Maybe he uses this and gets close to Allison and Lori, aiming to make them his final victims before he reveals that Michael Myers is dead in an alley. Maybe, you know, he tends to escape, then go and get the body, something like that. And that would provide enough psychological damage in the movie, some psychological thrilling moments that it would be plausible. Now, then you have the whole thing with Michael Myers isn't dead. We know Michael Myers don't die. So maybe there are, in fact, two killers going around because whoever this killer is, and right now we are assuming it's Corey, he doesn't know that Michael walked off after he killed him and that provides a little bit of drama because we the audience would know that provides a horrifying twist that we know the killer is going to catch up with him we know who the killer is and then we know that Michael Myers is alive and Michael Myers is going to catch up with him. Maybe that's how they play this and that would be very close to Christine. Now in the event that Corey is not guilty. This still works. Whoever the killer is has a relation to this girl. And if it's a person that is not Corey, then it's someone older. And if it's someone older, then this stands to reason that this girl would appear in a flashback in which Michael Myers kills her. Maybe that's where one of the masks actually ends up. We don't know if the mask he's given in Halloween 2018 is in fact the same mask he used all the way back when. We assume that it is. We assume that it's been in evidence and all of this, but maybe they just brought a mask. And the real mask was taken a long time ago by this other person. This other person's been keeping this mask and the mask has been calling to the men and basically it has been whispering in their ear. Not for real, but very psychologically so. And that could still work for this movie. And that's where I think they're going to go. 
Either way, this girlfriend, this dead girlfriend, is going to play a part in the overall plot of the movie. Let me know what you guys think. So make sure you're leaving us a comment in the comment box below. YouTube likes it and we like to hear from you. Don't forget to share this content with all of your friends so that they can be part of the conversation too. Don't forget to hit that like button because YouTube likes it when you hit the like button. And then Miko says we need more subscribers and you don't want to disappoint Miko. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. And hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single video we do. And then friends, at the end of the day, what is that? Fandom is family.